Hello! This is Reverend Don Lewis, and I'm very pleased to bring you Part 4 of our coverage of the 21st Annual St. Louis Pagan Picnic. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Hi, I'm Ellen Dugan. And we're here at the 21st Annual St. Louis Pagan Picnic. And it just wouldn't be a pagan picnic if we didn't stop and talk to you. And how are, how are you doing so far this weekend? I'm doing good. Um, the weather is beautiful here this year. It's so nice. It's only about 80 and the sun's shining and um, it's very mild and uh, very unusual for the St. Louis Pagan Picnic. We usually have very <laughs> intense heat, so it's been beautiful here. Yes, indeed. Uh, now, you, you are, I've said before, you're one of the, well, the hardest working people in paganism. So I'm sure you've got a lot of stuff that you're doing. And I understand you have a book coming out next year. I have a book coming out, I believe it's May, late May. It'll be called Practical Prosperity Magic. And um, that'll come out with Llewellyn. And then I'm, I took off a couple months, which is really unusual for me. I haven't done that in about uh, 11 years. <laughs> I took <laughs> yeah. off about a month and a half. I took some downtime. And I'm gonna start another book this summer. Um, but I'm not, I never say what it was. I had someone ask me today, can you give me a hint? And I said, yes, it will have lots of pages. That's my hint. Um, so I'll start another book this summer and I'll get that rolling. Uh, I'm going to be at Temple Fest uh, with Christopher Penzak for the uh, Temple Tradition uh, this coming weekend in New Hampshire. And uh, then I have some downtime. And then the next event I'll do will be the uh, second annual Pagan Dream Cruise which will leave from Cape Canaveral on the 9th of September and we get back on the 14th of September. So we're going to hit three ports in five days. It'll be a lot of fun and you can still sign up for it. You can go to my website and find the link for it or you can follow my Facebook page and find the link for it there. But they're still um, still signing people up. It's only about 540 bucks per person. Um, so it's very affordable and uh, my husband and I are looking forward to it. I know there's witches coming from all over the country so it should be a lot of fun. And then in October, I got invited back to sign with Nora Roberts at her bookstore again. So I'll be signing The Witch's Tarot um, with Nora and uh, Tess Whitehurst, another Llewellyn author, and a lady named Carolyn Turgeon, who wrote this really fascinating uh, fiction book called Mermaid, which is really good. I read it a couple years ago. But um, So I'll be there with then some other authors as well. So that's what I have planned for the year. Very good. How many books do you have out now? Uh... 13 and 14 counting the tarot deck. So the Practical Prosperity Magic will be book 15. How, how do you continue to find the inspiration and the energy to keep writing? That's why I took some time off. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I talk a lot and I always have a lot to say. Anybody who knows me knows that. But um, there was a lot of things I wanted to write about. And the Prosperity Magic book came to be because um, Basically, life happened. My husband had been laid off a couple years ago, and money was getting tight, and I had worked some prosperity magic, and boom, found myself with a job offer in an hour after I cast the spell, and I wasn't looking for a job. It was a surprise, and anything that could have gone wrong with my job happened, and it really made me stop and think, okay, let's take a real hard look at this prosperity magic thing. And the next thing you know, I rolled a book out of it, and the book ended up being much more advanced and much more in depth than I thought. It's not just light a candle, say a charm, wish for money. If you don't do it correctly with the correct attitude and the correct um, emotions when you start, anything and everything can go wrong and usually does. So um, it was, it was probably took me longer to write than the other book I've done because it got sidetracked by several other projects. But it was fascinating to me to think that this, oh, this would be a fun book and it turned into something so much more. So I'm really excited to see how it all comes together when it's all done in a pretty package. And, should be a lot of fun. Very good. Now, you, you've come to many picnics. What do you most enjoy about this event? When the music's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like seeing the people. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of camaraderie. It's fun to see people here um, and talk to the other writers and the other vendors and just the people that come in. It's just, it's just relaxed and very Midwestern and very honest. And I just think it's a lot of fun to come to. Very cool. Now, if people would like to find out more about you and about your many books and your many projects, where would they go? You can go to my website, which is www.ellendugan.com. You can find me on Facebook, or you can find me on Twitter. I'm now, I finally, I've given in, I'm now on Twitter. Um, that's Ellen with an underscore and then Dugan to find me on Twitter. And then I also have a blog, which is called The Blog of Witchery, and that's on Blogspot. And there's links to that on my website and on my Facebook page. Very good. Well, thank you very much for taking the time Thanks, to talk Don. to us, and have a wonderful day. Hello, my name is Ellen Dugan.
My name is Kristen McLean. This is my daughter Pauline, and we are selling my dad's glass. His name is Bill King. He uh, started blowing glass back in 1980 in Toledo, Ohio, going and just taking a class at the Toledo Art Museum on glass blowing. And it just became such an interest to him that he started blowing for the uh, let's see what is it. Uh, Toledo Area Glass Blower Association and and while well, he was working for Owens Corning at the time and shortly after that in 1994 he retired, moved down to Columbus, Ohio and bought a new house and, with a separate garage that he made his own uh, workshop out of. And so he, he blows a number of different things from the plates which are a little bit later in his, in his Art history. Uh, some of these things, like this one here, is what he calls the tree of life or the fingers of life. And these have been some of his favorite ones. He does reds and pinks and greens. And then he started doing some etching work where he would explore with sandblasting techniques and special tape to help create special images and textures for his artwork. We've got pieces like that, and then also if we come over here, we have this piece here, which started clear glass outside, and then the purple glass inside, and then what he did is he cut out the shapes he wanted with the tape, put it inside, and then sandblasted. So we have the, the, the birds are smooth, and then you've got that sandblasted texture inside. And then one of his other favorite things became these uh, perfume bottles or essential oil bottles that he explored with um, different techniques to create inner swirls and, and little uh, globs of color with a little inkwell in there. And he just really loved all sorts of the color. Uh, I think his favorite were the uh, clear glass, clear color. He didn't do so much as with the opaque but he did enjoy experimenting with all the different types of colors. And swirls were a big popular part of his artwork. And, um, oh, and then he got into uh, big, heavy, clunky things. We, my family, my brothers and I would tease him because his glass would withstand a hurricane, we would say. And so there's always some heft to a lot of Dad's work. But this one we like because it's got the three different, um, I guess, portals into a different location there. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Which started out as a typical bowl, because you got the bowl shape, but then he pulled, he has a tool that he grabbed this and he made that, I think he calls these Jack and Jacks in the really? pulpit, Jack in the pulpit. And so he's got yeah, those. And again, his swirls were always the popular ones, the clear glass, and then he'd use the opaque glass for the design. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and then sadly, four years ago, December 8th, 1990, no, 2009. December 8th, 2009, Dad had been working in his studio that day and then just went to bed around the usual time and what happened was well we don't know really what happened because mom is already in bed and she heard a big thump and went down and he had fallen down the stairs in the house and had suffered some extreme severe and permanent brain damage so as of now he is in a nursing home in Columbus Ohio and uh, unfortunately can't blow anymore so I have inherited his glass and I know he enjoyed <laughs> attending art festivals and shows like this and and so I've taken on that the job for him. Very cool. Any questions? So, so what what exists of his work is what you have? What, yeah this is a limited collection and so and you were, you were telling me that uh, the perfume bottles are also able to be used as inkwells. Yeah, I had a, a writer last year come by and we, ha we have a bunch more. They're underneath here, but she found one that really appealed to her. And even though everybody uses the ballpoint pen, she just wanted to have one for her own writing with the old-fashioned inkwell and, and fountain pen. 
So cool. that was kind of a unique way to use that inkwell, or the, yeah, I guess you yeah. could call it that. And then also, we had a teenager buy one yesterday for a bubble bath. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. that's very cool. Mm -hmm. And one person, I think it was last year, bought some for olive oil just to use at the kitchen table for dabbing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's really So they have fun. many uses. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> some uses I never thought of because you see these and you think uh, perfume bottles, but it's whatever the, the, the purchaser or the imagination creates for you. So if people would like to know more about your father's work or if they would like to, to buy some but they're not here at the event, is there anywhere they can go? Yes, I would say the best thing to do would be to call me. My phone number is, or my name is Kristen McLean. My phone number is 314-974-8463. And I have a section of my basement set sectioned off so that we can show off some of Dad's glass. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hi, um, W. Lyon Martin. And I am the author and illustrator of Pink and Children's Books. And I'm also working hard to become an author and illustrator of non-Pagan Children's Books. And that's actually a lot more difficult than people understand because you have to um, send things into publishers and the competition is really stiff. And you were telling me that one of one of the books that you've worked on, one of the things you're working on, is teaching other people how to put together books. Um, a couple of years ago, I started a, a Twitter chat with a friend of mine called Kid Lit Art. It's since been taken over by three other illustrators. But during these chats, people ask again and again and again to be told how to make a picture book dummy, which is what an illustrator sends to a publisher to show them their story. So we had on the Twitter chat something called the Picture Book Dummy Challenge. And it goes from January to June and along the way, the, each, each week, the people who are following the chat are given the steps to do to make their picture books. What I did is I took all of these steps and I put them together into an ebook which you can go to my website and download that has all nine steps in a concise form with links to additional information and inf interviews with other illustrators and authors and it's only five dollars very cool and I'm the web's the it's on my blog which is wendy martin art wendy martin illustration artist blog so um you can follow me on twitter Wendy Martin Art. You can follow me on Facebook, Wendy Martin Art there too. I'm also on Google Plus and LinkedIn. And it's all Wendy Martin Art. Very cool. And um, you, you have a number of books that you put out that I are have, very charming. I have five hardcover storybooks and one soft cover that's a coloring book. It's called The ABCs of Lesser Known Goddesses. And I'll bet there's a goddess in there you've never heard of. And uh, you also do like a weekly coloring page. Yes, I do. If you go to my um, pagan author website, that's um, handcraftedpagan.com, you can sign up for the newsletter. I send out a weekly coloring page. And if there is a full moon or a holiday or something that's pagan specific, I'll theme the coloring page to that. Or there'll just be general coloring pages to the holidays or you know, whatever is happening in the world at that point. Uh, this week, I sent out, well, actually, I sent out the pages on Monday, so it's last week already. I sent out a litha bunny. Huh? And um, obviously, since Father's Day is coming up next week, I'm going to send out a Father's Day coloring page tomorrow. Very cool. And if you go to my website, you can also find the previous coloring pages from several years. They're all on the website. When you go to sign up for the newsletter, you just have to scroll down and pick, pick the one you like. Very cool. Now, since, since starting your path as an author, what has been your greatest joy? It's when I get emails or letters from the kids who love my books. So I save them and frame them and put them up on my walls because they are my inspiration. 
And what is the hardest thing? Finding a publisher. <laughs> So, uh, this is not the first time that we've interviewed you here at the picnic. No, I and think this is probably the fourth or fifth time. I think so. So, you're, you're usually here, not, not necessarily every, every single day of the picnic, but you're usually here every, most years. Yes. And so, I'm assuming that you'll probably be here next year. Uh, I hope so. The only reason that I wouldn't be here is I'm still learning how to be a better illustrator. And last year I wasn't here because I went to the illustration master class, which is a, a nine day intensive of how to be a better illustrator. And some of the top science fiction and fantasy illustrators from around the world came to teach. Oh wow. And they only accept 100 students. So that was in Amherst, Massachusetts. And I still haven't gotten the transporter thing figured out so I can be in two places at one time. Very cool. What, uh, this is the 21st year for the picnic. What, what do you think is the nicest thing about the picnic? Well, every year I get to see all of the people from around the area that I never see any other time of year. And it's so much fun to get hugs. Yes, indeed. Just recently, I've had a lot of authors come and ask me through email or in person how to help them make their books better. So I am offering a critique service. So, I expect, um, the, it's best if you've had the, your manuscript already reviewed by peers and, and had it critiqued because I charge $100 for the service, I give you a full editorial letter and my professional opinion on the um, commercial viability of your story. And I do a line edit telling you how to make your story better. And that's for people who are just looking for the text information. People who want to illustrate should go to get a picture book dummy, um, ebook, and a lot of information is in there on how to put together your, your book dummy so that you can find a publisher or an agent. Very good. Well, I wish you much success with that. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. And have a wonderful day. You too. I hope that you enjoyed that and that you'll join us again for part 5 of our coverage of the 21st annual St. Louis Pagan Picnic. And until next time, may you blessed be.